So, today we are going to dive deep into uh, build systems. So, this is basically um, the last lecture on tools. So, this spot is reserved for um, C topics like these Wednesday lectures. But the first two lectures were was about uh, were about tools like Linux and today it's gonna be about build systems. So sorry because last lecture was like a bit longer. This this time I will try to make it into one hour so we all like uh, can pay attention within this hour. And basically starting from next week we will um, we will be discussing uh, C++ topics and all the tools uh, topics uh, will be discussed in tutorials and in offline videos. Okay, so this is like an um, important deal for me. So because most of the people I've met that they struggle with C++ in general, um, this struggle is usually related to build system. So for me, um, it's really important to understand the concepts behind building uh, programs and actually how to deal with build systems. So we are not going to see any C++ code uh, in this lecture. So I'm sorry for the ones that really want to start doing C++ coding. But in this case, we will basically uh, take a step back and then learn how to use the tools before we start coding. Okay, so this is basically a really, really brief of how it looks like a software development ecosystem. So in the middle, we have the source code. So usually when people think about coding in general, they would think about this particular thing. So you only focus on source code. But actually, if you, if you pay attention to the picture, you will see that there is a lot of other tools involved in the development development sorry of this uh, software so it's not just the source code you write and basically learning how to deal uh, with these tools learning how to use these tools will give you superpowers in terms of like how to work with c++ and any other language in general so in this particular course we will discuss some of these uh, tools but not all of them so the today's lecture is about build systems. So this will give you the idea of how to build C++ projects um, and then how to avoid some errors. Also during tutorial times, we will discuss a bit, but we will not dive really deep into how to use linters, uh, how to use static code analysis to improve your code. Uh, of course, this is a big topic nowadays and we will all have a separate tutorial for testing. Also, there are like some formatting tools that will format your code like automatically. Uh, nowadays, CI and CD, there is basically continuous integration and continuous, continuous development, deployment, sorry, is a big topic like in all software industries, including robotics. So this wasn't true probably five years ago, but now it's, it became the standard also in robotics industries. Uh, we will not see any tutorial unless some of you guys say, okay, no, Nacho, I would really like you to, to make a tutorial on this. Then probably like reaching the end of the course, we can make a small tutorial on CI and CD. Something that you will be struggling with a lot, probably it's going to be Git. So this is the version control system that nowadays everyone use. Um, so basically, again, we will not probably do like a full lecture on Git, um, probably a tutorial. So I have some recommendations, but you will need to use it. Uh, also, we will have a small tutorial on how to debug projects, C++ project, and there are all, all sort of things. The important thing I want to mention here is that all the stuff you see here, they are tools. So for me, when you are working on C++ projects or software projects in general, they're like uh, two different distinct things. So one is the tools you use and the other one is the concepts. So usually for me, it's, it's better that if you invest time 
focusing on concepts and not tools because the tools will change in five years but the concepts the concepts are very unlikely to change so whenever you need to make a decision on where to spend time probably it's a better idea to go for the concepts but anyway c plus plus in general is a complex language and we need tools to work with this language so if you only focus in in the in the um, concepts then you will struggle a lot trying to apply these concepts to real source code so basically the tools will give you superpowers in terms of what you can do with these uh, concepts and as i always say if your tool sucks you most likely will suck so it's never a bad idea to spend some time trying to improve your tools or to make a better usage of it so today we're gonna be um, diving deep into build systems and how the compilation process works at all so the compilation process what is a compiler anyway so a compiler is basically a program but it's not any program and it's basically the guy who will transform your horrible and unreadable source code into binary code binary code it's the language that the computer can understand here's a picture like showing how this process works in a really high level way so basically you will write a source code saying i want the computer to do this then there's this guy called the compiler that will do real black magic and then you will turn this source code that is readable by humans into binary code and this binary code is basically the one that, that the cpu is happy to to eat let's put it this way so the easiest way you can compile a C++ program is basically just calling the compiler. In our course, we will be using Clang, and this will basically build a program. They will put, um, they will, the compiler will uh, use the a.out uh, name that this is the standard, and then this program, if everything is working, this means that the compiler is properly installed and all the system libraries are there then you're ready to go that's the, the the whole thing you need to know about compilation this is something that we tested on previous lecture on the hello world example and i guess that all of you already did a small example on this and then this, the question is will it be always this easy of course not and this is a big thing uh, and something I forgot to mention is that I also have another say that is that if you if you want to understand a project then the, the best way to understand it is through the build system basically I met also a lot of people uh, both in academia and in this industry that they struggle a lot just because they don't know how to deal with build system and it's not not because they are stupid or they are not smart it's because probably they didn't spend the time trying to understand the build tools and um, this also gives you gives you some insights on how the project is structured and how it really works so basically knowing a build system of a project is a really good idea if you want to get into the the project the compiler so whenever you call this clan plus plus bang .cpp, will basically execute four steps behind the scenes one is called the pre-processing step, then it's the compilation, then the assembly, and then the linker. So if we try to make a diagram out of this, this is basically what, what is happening whenever you try to compile a C++ program. All these steps are like really, so we can dive really, really deep into those steps, but I think it makes no sense, but it's really good for you if you really know what's going on behind the scenes whenever you try to compile something and by the way when you learn how to build programs this is also a, a superpower because you, it will give you the ability to understand how to do things without having to like do random steps without knowing anything that you're doing uh, and once you understand how to build the things then you you know your program you know your project then you can deal with it and you own this project you can change it the way you want so a lot of people usually uh, write everything in one file let's say okay my whole project it's called 
big project dog cpp and i have all my pipeline there because i don't know how to use this include statements and whatsoever so the idea is that if you know how to uh, work with the tools then your life will be easier okay coming back to the lesson basically whenever you, you call the compiler you invoke the compiler you will give a source file in this case it's called main.cpp and then the four steps which we mentioned will happen behind the scenes let's see like step by step so this is a small example we will do this is something that you can do it i will uh, actually recommend you to try it on your on your machines so you can get some insights of the compilation process but this is not something you do on a daily basis okay let's try the trick it's working amazing okay we have a terminal here and then let's try to do this compilation step by step but manually for that i will go to my dev directory and i will create a directory called compilation I will cd into this directory so this is where i'm actually standing right now and then let's remove everything from here so we, we have a, um, a clean working directory so the first thing, thing we will do is we will create a really small uh, program because we don't want to focus on c on this lecture but on how to build c projects so i will not use the um, Visual Studio Code Editor because it's way too much for doing this. So let's call this main CPP and then let's do what we already know how to do. Let's create the main function and then let's do C out I log build system. Oops. And then this guy and then we return zero and then that's basically it so of course if you do clang plus plus and then you invoke this compiler with main cpp now when you do ls you will have this a dot out but this is basically all you need if this program is super simple to compile so let's remove this for now and then let's start with again with a clean working directory so the first step is pre-processing this is basically uh, so we discussed this uh, on previous lecture so whenever you have a, an include so in this case will be this guy so whenever you do um, whenever you include a file in the on, on the source files you're talking about basically who is in charge of like cop going to this file and copy pasting the content of this file on the main.cpp file this is a preprocessor and also we'll expand macros uh we'll remove all the comments so let's actually let's do main cpp and then let's put here this is a comment where it is right and then the preprocessor will delete all the comments will include all the her files and will expand macros you don't really need to know how to use the preprocessor nowadays because actually the only thing you care is like how to include directories if this will be a C class, then we will be using macros. That is something really ugly to use. And if I find macros in your code, you will struggle, my friend. So I don't want to see this defined macros. But basically the preprocessor is the one in charge of doing this. And then if we do if we invoke the compiler, we can say, okay, I want to do the steps manually. Perhaps because I want to check what's going in, in between or because I want to change something else. The flag you need to, to pass to the compiler is this big E, and then you do main CPP, and this will open the file, pre-process this file, and then output the, the results to the standard output, right? So if I do this, you will get broom, a lot of stuff. But basically, let's redirect the standard output as we did on the first lecture, and then let's call this file main.i. It is like standard community. And now we can actually open this file and inspect the content. So if you try to see this, you will see a lot of stuff that this all actually comes from the IO stream header file. So all this stuff, we didn't write this code, but basically it was part of the, 
standard library. So there are a lot of lines actually. So let's go to the last line. And if you see here, so this small example after pre-processing, we have 28,000 lines and our original code was basically nothing. But all these lines actually came from the include IO stream header file. And if you see the source code, you see that, for example, our comments is not there anymore. If you remember, like, this is a comment where it is, it's not here because the preprocessor, like, clean up all this stuff. And whatever is up, basically, also the include is not here. So the include IO stream is not here anymore. Let's check again our CPP example. Basically, it was an include, then a comment. It's not there anymore. Okay, so now it's time for compilation. So this is a, a term that we all use wrong, including myself, but it's fine. Like everyone knows that it is like this, but whenever you say, I will compile this program, you're basically doing, I will pre-process this program, compile it, assemble it, and then link it to create an executable. But basically the whole compilation process, there is one step that is the real one that we call compilation. And this is basically where the compiler start to works, works for real. Mm -hmm. I mean, like this is if you want to write a compiler for any language, this is the this is your task. Basically, once you have the pre-processed file with all the source code, then you need to somehow figure out how to translate this into assembly code. As you remember in the first lecture, we saw like some really ugly assembly example. It's not something that we will discuss in the lecture, but basically you you need to know roughly what it is. Okay, so you have the preprocessed file and then you need to compile this to generate assembly. So basically how you do this, you invoke plan plus plus, and then you say, okay, this is my source file, right? There is a warning, but basically if you list your directory right now, you have a new file that is called main.s. Again, if you open this file, then you will see assembly code that this is not something you can actually uh, understand right now, unless you, you have a like electronics engineer background. But basically this is what it's really easy for a machine to understand. Then the third step will be to, okay, now that we have the assembly instructions for this particular target that is a Intel CPU, now it's time to generate like an, an object file. Basically an object file will be no more than binary code that a computer can understand. And I will stop there because otherwise it, this can take a lot of time. How will you do this? Then we again, refrain, point plus plus, and then dash C, and then the assembly file. Now, if you list your directory, now you have like four files, the original file, the main.i file, that is a preposit file, the assembly file and the object. Of course, if you pretend to op open this object, you won't see anything because this is binary code and actually it's an L format. So you can actually see some strings between the, the thing, but there is basically, it's not understood, understandable by a human, but for a, a computer. But of course, if you want to try to run this, it's okay, this is my program, it's not enough. So the last step is to link. So how we link this program, it's super easy, just do clan plus plus, and then you say, okay, this is the object I want to link, and then let's call the executable, so the output of this linking process. Um, here you can involve multiple object files, in our case we only have one, let's call it main. And then if you list your directory, you have your main executable, and finally you have uh, uh, the, the, the executable. So, doing a recap, basically whenever you, you want to, to compile a program, you should be using like four, uh, doing four commands, hopefully it's much more easy, but this is basically what's going on behind the scenes. And if you want to do clan plus plus and then main.cpp, that is the simplest one, basically all these steps are happening, but just behind the scenes, right? Also something that is super important is compilation flags. So uh, probably I will do a tutorial on this because I really want you to, to know how to use in particular uh, this guy, uh, how to optimize your code. But basically whenever you compile programs, 
you can actually specify different flags for the compilation process. And one of the options is like, okay, the standard. So as I, we already mentioned in the previous lecture, when, whenever you call Clang++, uh, you have a default standard, but you can use like C++11, C++14, C++17, 20, 23, depending on which standard is supported by the compiler. In our case, C++17. And also, for example, you can have additional options like, okay, if you have any warning, just show it to me. This is basically, you all, this is basically, if you find a warning, just let me know. Extra is like, if you think that there is another warning, just also let me know. And this error, it's warning as error, basically. You say, okay, if you find a warning, just stop the compilation process, something is wrong for me. But this is something that you pick, actually. Um, the optimizer basically meant that basically is one of the most important things in the compiler and a good compiler basically he has a good optimizer and this is basically the steps uh, involved that will turn some source code into really really optimal and fast code this is basically let's pretend that you have to do some operation like 2 plus 2 let's keep it simple you can do it at runtime and this means okay you can generate uh, these two numbers in memory then go and add these two numbers in memory and then get the result or you can realize that 2 plus 2 is a really simple computation to do and you can do it before you run the program we will discuss how to uh, do generics programming and static code generation on the last lecture so this will happen in two months or i in eight weeks so just wait for it the only thing I, I don't want you to, to, to forget is that, that it's, there is a way to compile your, your program and add optimization to it just with flags. Okay, so now that we dive deep into how to um, um, compile a really simple program, now we need to use this in our advantage and then let's talk about libraries. As usual, before I dive deep into this, I will give you one minute for questions, otherwise we continue with the lesson. Okay, no questions, so let's continue. What is a library, basically? So now that we know how to more or less build programs, uh, the idea is that we want to make usage of the compiler and the linker and all the tools in the tool chain and build really nice projects. So basically, that's where the concept of library comes instead of having everything in one uh, source file we want to say okay i want to put all these symbols let's say like they are arithmetic operations in one library and basically a library is just a bag a bag full of symbols and implementation details so why we use libraries it's because it's much easier to maintain it's much easier to distribute and it makes your project easy to read and to work with so a library, it's, can, it's basically multiple object files. These are like the symbols that are log logically connected. And there are two types of libraries. Most likely we will be only dealing with static libraries, uh, that they are faster, but of course they will take more space because they become part of the binary. So whenever you static link a library into your program, you basically have your program and all the symbols from the library all in the same executable of course if you have like a, some restrictions like an embedded platform this is not the best idea because probably you have like a two gigabytes binary and probably you don't need this but of course it's a bit faster than doing dynamic libraries but basically the dynamic library is what you have installed on your system so if you go to the slash user lib directory on your linux computer you will see a lot of dot so libraries that basically these libraries are sleeping there at, at runtime. Uh, when you need a symbol, you will go and search for it there. Basically, static libraries are just like an archive. So basically you have a bunch of symbols and then you put it all together in a .a file. How to create libraries in C++? Basically the mechanism to do this is splitting the declaration of a function and the definition. So for now we will stick with functions, uh, we will discuss a bit more about the syntax of this next lecture, but believe me, for building C++, you don't really need to know C++, it's just for building. 
So all these concepts are related to build systems. So don't worry if you don't understand something from the code, because the idea is that you, you shouldn't be paying attention to the source code right now, but to the build process. So basically, uh, fun a function declaration uh, set up an interface, and this is basically, let's call it a promise. And the one in, char in charge to, to search for this declaration is the preprocessor. So whenever you, okay, we will discuss this in two minutes. And the function definition, it's basically the implementation of this function. So whenever you work with, with you want to create libraries, then you will declare your functions in some header file, most likely. And this is basically, you're telling the preprocessor, pre okay, I promise I will give you the implementation for this function, so don't worry, you will get it soon. But then you just, just put the, the interface of the function. In this case, it's a function that's called functName. It takes an integer as input parameter and it returns void. This means nothing. And then in a different file, the idea is that you, you, get the you write the implementation with all the details of this particular function. How we split this between files? So usually you will have uh, some header file where you only put the interface and how you specify a uh, function definition. This means interface is basically this guy and how you specify this is, this is way too big, still big. Yeah. With this semicolon, so this basically says, okay, there will be a function there will be an implementation for this function. Believe me, it will happen at link time. And then, of course, you need to write implementation of this function in some other file. And uh, so actually, yeah, now this is fine. So this is the header file. It's called some file HPP, change the color. And this is the implementation for this function. And then you will you need to retype the prototype so you tell the, the compiler okay here's the implementation and then you basically say okay blah 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 and then you put the details and then for example in your main program the only thing you need to know for now is you need to include the, the header file the header file holds this promise i'm talking about that is basically the function the definition but not the implementation and then you can use this function without any problems. If you want to build this, and you should do it in your home, just write these three files. You can pick the names you want, and then you try to compile it, just saying, okay, clan plus plus, and then program, blah, blah, blah. But then you will get an error. But it's important to know that this error will happen. What happens if we put Implementation and also an HPP file. Uh, we need uh, probably one lecture for discussing this and where to put stuff. But basically, if you put implementation on header files, uh, the simplest thing that you will do is you will pay the price at compile time because you will basically, whenever you include this file in other CPP file. So the question is like, what happened if instead of uh, let's do red. Uh, this is not red. I'm colorblind. So let's say, okay, I want to put all my implementation on the HPP file. Of course, you can do it, but you need to, to really know what you're doing. Uh, because whenever you include this file, you will basically copy the whole implementation. And then you are basically not using the linker. And in this way, you, your, your build will be super slow. Of course, if you're working with one file, then it will be fine. But whenever you work with like billions of files, you can actually run out of memory on your build machine uh, on how, when you try to build this. So whenever you do this, you're basically not using the linker. And then you're basically throwing away one of the tools you have on your tool chain. So knowing how to split this implementation, uh, basically, it makes you friends with uh, the linker. So, okay. If you want to build this small example, then we have we will have an error. And the error is super important to know that the error is by the linker. So what is the meaning of this? 
when you try to so if you want to go for the four steps and then you do this but instead of doing the whole thing at once you do just a pre-processing part then this will work right because uh, whenever you include the, the file let's go back so uh, when you include this here the preprocessor will be happy enough because he trusts you and say okay there is some function that some the linker will give me the implementation in a future time and this is at linking time so basically you can go up to step number three on the compilation pipeline without any issues right the thing is when the linker uh, gets invoked and then it will try to search for the the, the symbols for from this function it will not see the function why is this because the, the implementation are not there so if you see the, the compile line basically you're just uh, using the program.cpp and you're not including any information about the other uh, .cpp file so that's the idea of the linker so basically if you see the original picture so the last step on the compilation pipeline it's uh, the linker and it will basically with the promises of that the functions you have made here at this part that is basically the just the function prototype the interface here it will go and search through all the object files that can be object files libraries could be external libraries for example and then it will say okay here is the implementation for this promise some function and then it will put it into the executable and basically that's how you link an implementation of a function with the, the definition right so that's when you don't use the when you put all the implementation on the header file you're basically skipping this uh, um, step and then you're basically not using the linker and of course this can uh, hurt you in many ways but the easiest way to put it is like okay compile time will be super big and probably would fail because of you will run out of uh, resources right so the library will it's a binary object that contains the compiled implementation of some methods in our case was some func the the function and the linking process will map a function declaration that is basically the prototype with the semicolon to its compiled implementation basically to use a library you need two files the header files we have where you have all the function prototypes and the interfaces that is this promise promises and the compiled library object if let's say if i am i want to give you a library uh, and i don't want to share with you the implementation of the library because i know i want to sell this library to you that it, I, the only thing i need to give you is like the herald file uh, where all the functions uh, product types are are specified and the library object that is all the binary code of course you can do reverse engineering engineering on the object files and the library files and then try to figure out like what's going on but basically if i don't give you the source code then you, you don't know what's going on it's just like binary objects so whenever you install for example nvidia drivers or any other proprietary software on your machine this is basically what is happening is this you're getting a hair file or actually multiple hair files and library objects okay so how to build these libraries we have yeah i think we have time to do a small example so basically let's pretend that you want to build a library it's called tools the library in this case we'll have two functions uh, it's called make it sunny make it rain uh, but basically for now we don't know the implementation so this is just the prototype and then for that we will create this tools HPP file and then we will specify the implementation on the CPP file so let's do this example right away so let's go to dev and then my first library okay clean working environment and then for now let's do this touch command will create these files but empty and then tools.hpp right 
So this is all we have. And then let's open now Visual Studio Code. <coughs> so we work uh, more comfortable. Let's change this. Make it bigger. And then let's start with the library. So this is the will be the, the header file for our library. And then we'll call pragma once here. This is basically to avoid including this header file multiple times. And then here we'll do, okay, make it sunny. And then the function is make it rain. So what's that the name? Make it rain, make it sunny. Yeah. Okay. So this, basically this is the header file. The, this is the prototype of the function, but the implementation is not here. For that we will open, then let's do this on the side. And then here on the CPP file, we will do uh, include and then tools. Yeah. HPP and then let's do let's copy this here basically and then how we implement this function basically opening uh, the scope operator and then let's include iostream and then here It's now sunny. And this is the implementation. Uh -huh. Let's. They are way too easy, so the formatter is doing its job. And then let's do C error. And then, oops, not yet implemented. I know, whatever, implement it, right? And then don't forget the semicolon. And let's put this here. And this is basically the implementation. So if you go to the slide, this is basically the example. There are the implementations are here. And then Whenever you want to use these functions, then you will need uh, to include just the header file. So let's put this here. And then, so let's include, and then it's called tools.hpp. And this basically you are now copy pasting this uh, on the, on the header, on this implement, sorry, these interfaces on the .cpp file. And then let's create a main function and then no, no CL. And now we can actually make it rain. We can call these functions and make it sunny, right? Uh, done. But now if you want to build this, so okay, let's close this guy here. Oops. And actually, let's close this. If you want to build this, so these are your files, then you will do clan plus plus and you do main.cpp and then you get this linking error, right? Linker command fail, blah, blah, blah. Why is this? Because you have the, the promise, but you don't have the implementation. So how to build this? Let's do it by hand really easily uh, because now we, we gain this uh, superpower that is to build libraries but now we have another problem that is that we don't know how to not to build to write libraries to make our life easier but we don't know how to build it so basically you will need at least three steps uh, the first steps will be you need to compile the, the implementation of the library that is on tools.cpp into an object file and for that you will use this guy that if you remember, it's part of the four steps of the compilation, and that's why we saw it before. And then you will need to uh, create this library object that this is basically with the archive command. 
and you can use as many object files here as you want in this case we'll have only one and then whenever we compile the main.cpp file we will say okay also please link to this library this is where the symbols are defined so let's do it this let's try to make it work and then let's open tools hpp no, let's let's keep it like this. it's fine so we say c plus plus and then you say okay standard not this standard this standard it's c plus plus 17 and then we will do tools.cpp and then the output file let me check it's tools.o and ah, because i'm missing the, the the dash c so if you see here don't forget this because now you're basically trying to make a, an executable so c plus plus and then dash c and now you have an object file right again if you want to open this object file there is nothing here but there's a command called the nm that you can demangle the symbols in here you don't need to know this so i'm just showing you to to show that i know it now to, you can see what is inside here and these are all the symbols but basically now you have the implementation that is the tools.o with all the binary code for this library and the her file with the declaration now you need to create an archive actually in this case it's basically r and then let's call it lib tools lib tools .a, and then we will put this into the archive if you list the files here you have now this library that is nothing more than the object the definitions on the tool library and the last step will be to compile this guy that is basically the main file but saying okay now you're taking the linker search libraries on this path this is the big l and the dot and the library you want to link is tools right and then let's call this main and indeed it worked i'm going fast because i'm really slow so let's try to fit this in one hour now if you run this program you have all the implementations details there anyway basically this was really painful to do so we have only three files four commands a lot of stuff and that's why we should as humans we, we should pursue better uh, tools right it's impossible that you can actually build real libraries with much much more source code and make it rain and sunny without any real tool behind you so building by hand was hard we had four commands to build really simple hello world example with just two symbols and actually this is the first exercise of task number b on your homework assignment you need to do this by hand and then how does this scale on big projects it's basically impossible to maintain because you cannot like run fifty thousand commands for uh, all your libraries and that's why humans invented build systems what are build systems just more tools right there are many of them like way too many probably especially for c plus and the idea behind this is that they will automate the build process of your projects the the brief history is that they begin a shell script so okay you can say you just run four commands you can write a shell script and then you just copy paste your commands there that's your task for first assignment but then of course if you change the name of the file then you need to go to the the shell script and change all the naming it's it's a mess and then they turn these shell scripts into make files that is basically one of the first uh, build systems that is still nowadays one of the most used and then they say okay but make files are really hard to write and maintain so let's uh, create meta build systems like cmake that basically will generate make files for us right and the fact is that cmake is not a build system at all it's basically a build system generator so it's called meta build system and it will basically generate a build system for you after you, you use CMake, that is super popular nowadays, you need to use an actual build system like Make or Ninja, for example. So what is the idea? What I wish 
I could write. So we have these three commands that we just run in the example. A bit faster probably, but you can go into the video and do it slowly. Of course, you should try all these examples on your computer. And then I would like to write the script in the form of, okay, this command that is long and boring, the only thing I, actually these two commands, I actually want a library. So, okay, just put add library and then let's call it tools because that's the, the name we pick. And then the, just build objects for tools.cpp. If you have more files, you will put it here. Uh, and then I want an executable that is basically, let's put it with our cover. This is too fancy, I like it. This guy and it's main.cpp. So actually this is the, the first part of this line is this, this one. And then the other thing you, you need to do is like, oh, it's saying, okay, link this binary to the tools uh, um, library, right? So all these three commands are full of information that we don't, we don't want. We actually, the only thing we need is like add library, add executable, target and libraries. That's what I wish I could write. And then that's where CMake came into the game. So one of the most popular build tools out there uh, does not build the code. We already say this, but generate files to feed it into the build system. It's cross platform and it's very powerful if you know how to use it. And uh, still the build recipe that is basically this build script is readable so if you see this the add library blah 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 then this is still readable so if you read the script it's i mean you can make a sense out of what's going on but if you compare these three lines with the three lines above then if you don't know uh, a lot of compilation commands then actually when you read these three lines you have no idea what's going on so that's that's the idea that's why it's powerful so from a user perspective, once you, you build this uh, links um, build script, the only thing you need to know is like you will, the usual process is to create a build directory and then you will execute CMake and lastly you will do make. So basically this step here is because CMake is not a build system, so it's basically a build system generator. So the first step is to create the build system, make for example, and then make. Uh, all the process is completely defined on the CMake list file, so this is uh, how it, it works. And all children's files, like if you have like multiple uh, CMake lists on your project. Let's do the, the really basic C first CMake project here. And for now, we will, we will reuse the example uh, that on the make it rain and make it sunny. So let's go for it. I think we still have time, so yeah. So first we will, let's remove .o and .a. So we have a clean directory. Let's create this guy, cmake list txt. And now let's open the file here. So the first thing you need to know is you need to, so there's some border plate code uh, but it's basically two lines. There's CMake minimum required, and then you say version 3.1, that is the one on my system. So in my case, if I do this, it's 3.10. Let's do that like this. And then you will need to specify the project name. So project, and then you say uh, first project, it's on the slides. And then that's basically, that's all the very basics you need to know. And then there are other stuff you can do. For example, you can do set and then CMake standard. And then you say, okay, 17, this basically replace this on the build flag, uh, C++ 17. So, but this will do it for all the files. So if you have like 50,000 files, it will add this flag to all the compilation uh, lines on for all these files. If you want to do it manually, then you need to write it on all your lines. And then let's do add library. And then we call this library tools. And then this is the implementation. And then add executable main and it's called main CPP and target 
link libraries let's link main with tools right and lastly but not uh, but not least let's do this so cmake so this is important for all the toolings we will be using on this particular vector so it, this will generate a compile commands file that is a json file with all the build script and i will show you why it's important uh, in, in the tutorials but now we will inspect this file so okay this is my first library the first step is to create a directory called build and then we will cd into this directory it's now clean and then we will invoke cmake then you need to specify dot dot because you're actually saying okay my cmake list file is on one uh, level up and if you see the output of this you will see a lot of information like okay we found a compiler that is clang 10 that is the one we are using and some other stuff so this is basically now ready to build so if you do make it will basically build the project and now that you know all the steps involving compilation you can actually make a sense out of this output now it's building a c++ object you know a .o file and then uh, linking a static library lib tools this is basically the second command we ran before and then it stopped there and then we will start working with the main we will uh, build the object main.o and then we will link this object with the other library right and then build target main it's ready so if you list now you have this file main that is basically the same object the same uh, implementation the same sorry the same executable executable as we did before but much easier right and cmake export conf. and this is the thing i wanted to show you if you inspect this compile commands.json you will basically see the command so in this case uh, it's roughly equivalent to doing a shell script but it's good to, to inspect these files to, to realize that they're actually doing the same thing as we did before so there is no real magic involved in build systems but they're like just scripts and steps that will generate the build lines for you in this case it's calling c++ with the standard this is 17 is the same and then it will this is the, the file and this is the object file so if you compare this with the information on the slide you will see that there is basically the same and some other stuff you can do is, for example it's like uh, set cmake uh, c flux oh cmake ah, i forgot the sorry let me okay cxx flux cxx flux and then you can do for example all and just by doing this on the build script when you we, we will not even compile this so when you when you inspect the compiles command uh, JSON, you will see that this wl it's added to all the lines so that's why for me it's important that you you roughly know what's going on behind the scenes and that's why you should run the four steps on the compilation process and build uh, the libraries by hand the very first time going back and almost finishing so now we have the libraries we know how to write libraries we learn how to basically <coughs> Uh, split the implementation and the definition of functions uh, to in order to build libraries we are using cmake to simplify the build process and basically there are some other examples here on what you can do with cmake the idea is like it's not nothing that i can teach you in a lecture but you should actually of course start working with it and that's why homework assignment has an exercise on cmake list so you should go there and and check it out i put you some useful commands here uh, the only thing i want to mention is that basically if you really mess up the things the good thing about cmake is that with this uh, framework you have a build directory where all your files are there and let's say you there is something that is not working you can just remove this directory and then start from scratch so in my case so let's say that uh, i don't know something is wrong one thing I can do is just remove the complete directory and then I do it everything from scratch. So 
take directory and then directory cd into build and then cmake dot dot and this will basically do, do everything from scratch and then just you can make the project again right so make sure that if you're really struggling just remove the build directory and then that should be it so let's do one thing because i want to really stick to the hour thing and we're basically done slides will be on the campus here are some information on how to use cmake in your benefit so how to find other packages uh, on the system so just make sure you you go through it you don't need to know how to use this now on cmake because you are not using external libraries but you will so for example when you do your final project that you will be using uh, OpenCV, for example then you need how to know this that is basically one command that is called find package so that's the idea of cmake if you want to actually use libraries on your build commands then you will need to specify all the paths manually and this is a mess and basically cmake will give you the the tool to just run find package that is this uh, guy here and will will do all the dirty work for you so there is no need to discuss this in the lecture so i will just stop here and okay time for questions we have some more minutes let's do recap so compilation process there are four steps involved then we saw libraries how to manually build libraries uh, doing comp uh, compile lines by hand it was painful and it took a lot of time that's one of the reasons we are reaching the hour uh, right now it's because it takes time and then we say okay instead of doing everything by hand let's work with build system and we introduce it cmake and then we saw that with really simple uh, script with a really simple scripted language like cmake you can generate your build systems and work it uh, work much more easy so any questions so far By the way, the only way of learning CMake and all this stuff is just using it. So it's not, that's why it's, for me, it's not really on the concept side. Um, it's just a tool and you will be using this for your homework, the first homework and probably uh, the, the rest of your homeworks and your final project. Okay, so there is a question that is types of linking libraries. What do you mean with types? So basically you only have two types out there. It's called static libraries and dynamic libraries. So uh, where is this? So here on slide 15, we have like basically the definitions. You don't really need to know a lot about this because it's not necessary but the only thing you need to know is that there are two types the static ones will have everything packed so it's like basically just a bug so there is no real thing in there and then you will put this library into your binary and make a big thing and that's your whole program and then the dynamic libraries it's they're called dynamic actually this is important so whatever i whenever i say static the, the thing that it should came up into your mind is basically something that will happen at compiled time so before it's something that is happening before you even get to run your program that's static in c++ let's say so static linking basically you say okay this is happening before i run the program okay so this guy is telling me that i will put all the library objects into my binary and dynamic whenever i say dynamic and this will so we will uh, reuse these concepts a lot during the lectures it's something that is happening at runtime this means i am already running my program so for example uh, you're doing dot slash main and then the execution start and then whatever happens here it's called dynamic and this means if i have a shared object a dynamic library i will go and search for the the symbols the implementation of this library at runtime this means okay uh, see out whatever and then make it sunny and then in this moment i need to go to the file say okay let's search for this at .so files and then give me the implementation 
That's why you can also have linking errors at runtime. So if you do this and if you have time, you can actually do the exercise. Just use CMake, it's easier. Make it a share object and then remove one of the implementations and then it would build this time. So whenever you forget to do it at, at static, uh, with static libraries, then you get compilation errors. But with dynamics, you will see the same error, but at runtime. So that's basically the difference. So, Andrew, probably that uh, we can discuss it offline. So, there is Pagat public for this uh, rogue way of linking. Yeah, that's probably a bit deeper, but I mean, it's, it's a good question. So, we were up here. If you want, uh, if you if you want to use external li library, do you have to compile it? It depends. So, depends on. Uh, the environment you're using. So if you're using pre-compiled libraries, so it, it really depends. So you can be using a package manager, for example, like Conan, and then this will download pre-compiled libraries for you. And the only thing you need to do is to specify where the library and the header files. Uh, but probably the other thing you can do is like, okay, you compile it before. So this is how we will do it for OpenCV. We will download the source code, we will build it, we will install it in your in our systems, and then you basically specify, okay, just go for and search for OpenCV, and you can actually include libraries as part of your build system, and this is actually really common, and then you build it with your program. So let's say you have a project, and instead of, of searching the the system wide OpenCV, you just clone OpenCV and build it before you even get to build your project. So, this is actually quite common nowadays. Okay, in the meantime, so Git is something that we will probably not cover during lectures. So, it's really important for me that you get started with Git. Git is a tool. Everyone needs some time to get used to the tool, but it's, there is no real black magic behind. The only thing it's impossible for me to understand how to use the tool if you don't use it. So the concepts behind are like super abstract, whatever. And then when you, when you get to run the commands and use the tool, it's super easy. So my recommendation is just go, there's a hundred seconds, get started video with some of the details and just start using the tool. Also, Andrew, one of your colleagues recommended this introduction. So it's a 15 minutes introduction. I watched the video. It's fine. Okay, guys, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for asking questions in the channel. If there is something that you want to discuss offline, Discord channel, email, I'm always avail available. And that's it.